Hi, and welcome back to the Mini Machine Job. Not a whole lot going on here lately. Um, hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving. I know my wife and I did. We went to the families um, for the feast. Three birds on the table, one deep fried in oil, smoked, and traditional from the oven. So it was fun. Uh, what do we got going on here? I need to get back into um, showing how to do things on the mini mill and the mini lathe. That's part of the reason why I'm here. Um, so what do we do? Not too much happened today. Just did a lot of shop cleanup. Especially the mini lathe, the uh, chip tray was just a mess. Uh, there was a ton of oil, grease, all kinds of stuff in it. I actually had to unbolt it and take it to the trash can, scrub it down with paint thinner. So, um, let me take you over here to the bench and show share a couple items. And then I'll show the finished um, Harbor Freight Arbor. All right. All right, first thing first, just to show you some stuff here. This guy, I know everybody's seen before, but I just wanted to explain how I made the ball on this guy. This thing. Uh, it's kind of a cute trick. You can mount this in the tool holder and just come right in. And it does a beautiful job cutting it. And I guess I've seen some tricks where they touch this first, because this area is going to disappear and figure out that depth and then they come and touch this and then they figure out that so now you know when you're going in X and Y um, when to stop before you start cutting in too far so that's one little trick that I did um, on this guy um, everybody should keep going to Amazon from time to time because you'll find things where they screw up in the pricing and they do honor it this should have been about a forty dollar um, cutter this is a Niagara cutter. <laughs> they had it accidentally up there for four dollars. So I picked that up real quick. Um, and like I said, they do honor um, their mistakes. I guess it comes under law bait and switch or something. So speaking of that too, the friend of mine and, um, that owns the machine shop gave me a phone call. Let me put this away. In a panic. And I was like, okay, okay, Darren, let up. And he says, I'm emailing you a link, go there now. And I did, and it went to Amazon, and it went to this guy, this Matoyo micrometer. And these things are really nice. This is so smooth, I can't believe it. Um, but again, this should have been, normally this retails for $133. Um, at that time, it was a little bit over 100 bucks, but they messed it up and they had it for $11.25. So yeah, I immediately put this on order, um, and I asked Darren, I mean, did you buy just five of them? And he started, like, shaming me that I only bought one of them, so yeah, I went back and bought another one. <laughs> so now I've got two really nice micrometers here, well, i got more than that, but for $11. And right now, they've changed the price on it, it's uh, up there for $89, so if anybody's interested in that. And also, speaking of Amazon, some time ago, I bought this for the radio alarm saw. It's kind of interesting. It's a little scary, but yeah, it cuts metal. This is, this is one of the cuts that it did. Where, where's the camera? There it is. I don't know if you can see kind of the finish on it. But yeah, I haven't done steel with it, but boy, it takes a lot of the labor out of the hacksaw. But I did eventually um, take it off because, yeah, you can see it's got little teeth in here to keep it from digging in too fast. But I was afraid it was going to start messing up um, the bearings on the uh, radio alarm. So I don't know, I might mount this on, I've got a regular chop saw or something like that, and get it back into business. Oh, that's sharp. I don't want to cut up everything here. Put it over there. Um, what else? Let's see if anybody can figure out what this little guy is. I kind of had a clue to figure it out, but uh, it says 11, L-E-V-I-N, and you open it up, and it's a nice little guy like this. So if anybody can do research and figure this out, it's got a little 
bubble level here and you can spin these guys to level it out and you open and close the jaws on this guy so all I can say is good luck I'd be surprised if somebody can figure this out maybe I should come a little closer here over there so you can kind of see it close up there we go oh, keep going the wrong direction Dave okay 11 Leave a comment if you can figure it out. It took me quite a while to do it, but... Alright, well, let's bring every, the camera over and take a look at the end of the arbor. On this guy, what have I done? I decided I'm going to keep it. So I started just kind of cleaning it up like I do all tools that I get. This part, the face piece, when it came out of the casting, this entire edge all the way around was rough, so I've already taken a file to that, cleaned it up, went to Home Depot to get the metric screws. I wanted to get new bolts rather than these ugly black things. And as usual, they don't have any. Uh, their bins for metric are always a mess. I did manage to find the washers, 8mm washers for it. Um, you pull a baggie out, there's only one baggie, there's three in it, it's been open, the fourth one is missing. Root around in the drawer and I found the fourth, fourth one going by at 75 cents. They didn't have the bolts, so what I did was I just took the existing ones and um, took it to the drill press with the brass wire brush, took all the black off of it. I need to do this one a little bit more, but they look nice, so I like that. Um, next thing, down in here there was a really sharp burr. I mean, it was pointy. So I've taken the dremel tool, right over the motor tool, whatever, and ground that down. I've also gone around the inside here because this, this is really sharp. It's still not even that nice. That's why I brought the file over here. I'm just trying to get some of the edge off of it. Oh yeah, it's nicer. <laughs> up. Um, then on the bolts, and I would, they originally had this steel piece back here to press on the ram, and nothing on the side of the steel bolts was touching the ram, so for, the, for both of them I was thinking about just taking a piece of brass, and this, um, I got a thrift store, Salvation Army, St. Vincent de Paul, and this was a candle stand. There was a base that it screwed into and a cup for the candle at the top, 10 cents. So you can find a lot of nice things at thrift stores. Don't be afraid to go there. So uh, I was originally just going to do a kind of like a little slug that slid in there and they put the bolt in, but I'm picturing it moving all around as the ram goes up and down. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to take the screw, drill a hole in it, machine a piece of brass that goes down in the hole pretty far and I was going to leave it long but I'm picturing it's still going to rock so what I need to do is just make it barely a little piece of brass on the end and it's not going to move around so to drill a hole I've done it before um, I made a long time ago a whole set of little thread protectors and boy I've used these things left and right because you can actually run this bolt into one of them Reface the bolt or do whatever you need to, but yeah, I got an eight by one twenty-five. Was already done, and I tried um, just setting the bolt in the vise and figuring I'll just clamp down on it and drill it, but it didn't look like it was straight. So that's why I brought the thread protector out because I'm going to go pretty deep with the hole and I want to make sure I'm straight on it. So you run the thread protector down on it. And then I had brought out the regular V-block, this guy, but when I put it in there, it's hitting the nut, the head part of it. So that one's not going to work. Um, then I brought out my homemade one and it clears it, it doesn't hit anything. So I can put it, well the problem is I've got to put a spacer here to bring it up. Now I'm going to hit the hole. Yeah, the vice 
can't do it that way. So I'm going to figure out something here. Two of them. Put that one in there, put that one in there. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> that'll hold it. That hits, but it doesn't make any difference. So I guess I'll do that. <clears throat> to hold it in place so I can drill a hole and I gotta drill out four of them. I've got two short ones and two long ones, and I'm probably gonna take the long ones down so it looks better, because that pokes way out. That's not gonna go in that far. So all it needs to do is be all the same length. Yeah. That would be nice, because they're actually going to be longer when I have a little teeny piece of brass poking out. Um, so I'll just drill the holes, and that's probably it. Just put it back together, tighten them up a bit so it snugs up the rim. Oh yeah, this collar that goes on this end, which holds this guy in place. Uh, I'll remachine that. I've got, I don't have any big steel, so, but there's no force on it. So I've got a piece of one and a quarter OD aluminum, and I'll turn that, and that'll be the end of it. This is going to be all rebuilt and back together. So I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. Actually, I wanted to come in and show you the setup real quick. Um, rather than use that other V block, the homemade V block or whatever you call it, it's got the V in it, the thread protector, the bolt, and then the pivoting vise that I showed in another video, because that just holds it right there, perfect, I don't care about anything. Use the edge finder to find dead center, then I'll use the spotting drill to per start the center, and then drill the final hole, go through all four screws, and I'll be done with that. All right, I don't think I've ever showed boring on the mini lathe, but as far as working on the arbor for Harbor Freight, I drilled out all four of the screws and made the uh, little insert that goes in there so I now have brass tip and uh, Loctite in that with the blue and that'll come out good. This is trying to replace this ring. <laughs> which you can tell the hole isn't even on center. So, um, I already surfaced the outside. Again, if I hit steel, one and a quarter inch bar of steel, I'd be doing it out of that. But I don't, so I'm doing it out of aluminum. And wish I could tell you where this barring bar actually was bought. It was just given to me by my friend, the machinist. I've got a um, mechanical stop here. I'm moving this by hand on the, the saddle in and out. And the mechanical stop keeps me from keeps me at the same depth. So, and I'm doing this dry, so it doesn't really need anything. Back it out a little bit. Three thousand. I love doing this because I love watching the chips just fly out. Chip, chips keep getting in between the saddle and the block. Yeah, I got a ways to go on this one, but this is fun. I love doing this. Right, hit bottom. You can hear it. The finish on it's really nice. Don't need any. Um, cutting fluid or anything. Some of the other boring bars I have, or the materials that you do it on, yeah, you definitely have to use cutting fluid. Clear it up enough that you can kind of see the finish that's down in there. Doom, doom, come on out, everybody. All out. Try to <coughs> excuse me, zoom in here. Let's see if I can see everything. Yeah, it doesn't like to focus when you zoom in too far. I think you can see that. 
try the other light just in case. Weird. Eh. Oh well. Alright, bring it back when I'm done. Alright, board out. Never did show parting, I guess. This is one of the thinnest blades that I've got. How big is that anyway? This guy is... If I can get in there. Yeah, I can probably get in there. I'll right, measure it back here, Dave. This is a 42 thousandths thick blade, and I'm using WD-40 and a slow speed. Also in the boring tool, that particular tool likes to be two thousandths below dead center. So, just so everybody knows, give it a little speed, WD-40, going in. Feeding in about a thousandth every half second. One more forty. <laughs> Again, this is that Amazon blade. It's like six dollars. Beautiful blade. Chatter if your compound is loose at all. No play allowed. Alright, this is the finished guy here. Um, I'm going to review you know, D-Bird, all of this, all of the edges down here cleaned up. There was a sharp metal burr here that I took down with a motor tool, a Dremel. There were a lot of other spots on, on the paint that looked like it was uh, from the casting, but when I hit it with a Dremel, Oof, it just went into like dust. It was paint caked on. So all the paint's cleaned up. Um, took all the stupid black anodizing off the bolt here, here, and here. And made the little brass inserts that you saw. And I mean, it's, it's nice. <laughs> you can actually see the brass mark on the sides. Also made the ring for it. Turn that sideways, it's pretty heavy. Um, looking at the camera, yeah, you can see the ring that I made to hold it in. So I'm pretty done with this guy. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, or where they angled the cutouts in this. So this will go someplace in the shop, and like I said, Harbor Freight, if you just put some labor into it, you wind up something pretty nice. Um, so this was, I had my 20% off coupon. <laughs> This was regularly $55, 20% off. I got it for $44. But I love their manual too. Whoop, as it falls over. Read this material before using this product. Failure to do so can result in serious injury. Save this manual. <laughs> right. So I was looking through it, and their first section is a lot of safety warnings and cautions and observe the work area. But 14, I love I love this. Um, let me put that down. Oh, stay up there. Oh, turn it sideways. That's kind of funny. Avoid unintentional starting. Be sure the switch is in the off position when not in use. So, okay, you just put it off, right? And then you can plug it in. So, here we go. Plug it in. Now I can turn it on. Now I can use it, right? Okay, funny. <laughs> Alright, well next video I'm going to do is actually making something. So I hope you enjoyed this one and watching what was going on with the Harbor Freight. See everybody next time.